How's it going, folks? I'm Deswood Desfit, and this is the brand new Apple Watch Ultra. So Apple's had some nice updates to the Apple Watch since it first came out, but the Ultra is really the first major redesign, and it even comes with a completely new box. So in today's video, we're gonna check out what's exactly different, and we'll also compare it with the new Series 8, along with some other watches that may be of interest to you. And if you haven't checked out my full in-depth review of the Ultra, that should be out by the time that you're watching this video, and I'll have that link down in the description below. So I guess without further ado, let's check this thing out. So this new box has very much a matte finish to it versus a little bit more glossy texture that you'll find on like the Series 8 right here. And then on the back of the box, it still has these little flaps that we're gonna open. So let's go get these open right here. Wow, that's definitely quite a different experience right here. And for comparison, this is what you're gonna see on something like an SE or a Series 8. So we have this pamphlet right here, which we'll thumb through in just one second. Put that aside for the moment. And then we have the case as well as the Alpine loop. And then on the inside of this is a nice background of a mountain. All right, so let's go ahead and check out this pamphlet really quick. So it shows basically all the different options that you can get in terms of the band, the Alpine loop, the ocean loop, and the trail loop. And then just basically a quick start guide showing some of the functions and how you get around the device. And then back here is information that you'll probably never read. Let's check these out. So I have the Alpine loop here, and then I also have the ocean loop here. So we're gonna go ahead and check out both of those loops. And here we go. All right, designed by Apple California. It does have the actual coordinates of their headquarters. Let's go ahead and pull this out really quick. And what we have here is the USB-C fast charging cable. And oh, look at that. It's actually a braided cable. Wow. So that is definitely a nice touch and certainly something different than the Series 8 as well as the SE. Other than that, it is the same fast charging cable, but it does have that nice braided cable though. Okay, and there it is. Ooh -wee. That is pretty nice. So this only comes in one case configuration, this brushed titanium color, and only comes in one GPS slash cellular configuration. So all of them do have GPS as well as cellular. And the weight absolutely is immediately noticeable compared to something like a Series 8 right here. It's definitely a bit more hefty. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that aside for the moment and check out the loops. So this is the Alpine loop in orange. Slides out just like so. Has instructions for you on how to install them. And by the way, your old loops for something like a 45 millimeter Series 7 will also work with the new Ultra. So this has titanium hardware. So this is going to be a titanium hook right here. Very nice, soft, stretchy material. Metal hardware on each side as well. And then here is the ocean loop. Interesting. So the ocean loop, there's a little bit of assembly required. This has quite a bit of stretch to it. So you can see these little holes. They'll actually like, whoa, just like that. This does not have metal hardware, at least on the ends, like the Alpine loop does. And then according to the instructions on this, so it's actually a spring-loaded mechanism right here. And then this will actually go through one of those holes and then it just locks back into place. That's cool. I didn't notice this actually before at the uh, Apple event. Very nice. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put this aside for the moment because the Alpine loop is a little bit more appropriate for my usage. So go ahead and snap these into place and wow. So the metal on metal that's really, really solid, quite robust right there. But just for an example, let's go ahead and take the sport loop off of the Series 8 right here. And yep, 
just like that. Can totally use older bands with the Ultra. So just initial appearance. So this is how the Ultra looks on my 187 millimeter circumference wrist. Now we're gonna go ahead and open up the watch app and get this thing rolling. All right, so next up is setting up the action button since this is something unique and new to the Ultra. So uh, you can set this up on the watch itself too, but um, it actually just gives you the options of going over and uh, setting these options right now. So you have the workout, you can enable a stopwatch, drop a waypoint, enable the backtrack feature, dive feature, as well as the flashlight. So for the moment, let's go ahead and just say that we're gonna go ahead and do the workout and then continue with that. And then these are gonna be some of the dive specific features that they highlighted during the keynote. And then basically some diving safety information because obviously it is a dangerous activity. Then there we go, the Apple Watch is syncing. So if we get to know the watch, this is all pretty much the normal stuff that we usually see. And the sync process actually does usually take quite a few minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and loop back after this is all done. Okay, so it's actually been a couple weeks since I filmed that last portion because I got all distracted and excited about the Ultra and I wanted to go for a run, but I think it actually may be a good thing because by now my full in-depth review of the Ultra should be out. So if you haven't checked that out already, I went into a lot of detail on the actual sports and outdoor performance of the Ultra. So I'll have that link down in the description below, but it has also allowed me to have more time with the Ultra to collect even more thoughts about the wearability, the usability, the durability, and the, what, another E, uh, battery life ability of the Ultra. So I'll be sharing some of that in this video as well. But in addition to that, I'll also be doing some size and weight comparisons with the new Series 8, the new second gen SC, as well as some other watches I have in this drawer over here. But first, I want to go ahead and talk about some of the more unique features of the Ultra, including the action button, as well as the precision start feature. Okay, so the Ultra does have quite a few unique hardware features, including the sapphire lens, the flat display, titanium hardware, larger digital crown, as well as the button guard. But in terms of usability, they've also added the action button right here. So in terms of how you customize the action button in the settings right here, so scroll down right here, there's action button, and then you can choose between different actions. If we click this right here, Here's from eight different actions they currently have set up. I would anticipate this list would get a little bit larger as time goes on, but you can do workout, enable a stopwatch, drop a waypoint, enable the backtrack feature, dive feature, flashlight, shortcut, or disable it altogether. So with the workout feature, Right now, you will choose the app, and the reason they have app listed here is that third-party developers will be able to leverage the action button, so I'll be really excited to see what they can do with that action button, but right now, it's just a native workout app. And then with the native workout app, basically on the first press, you can choose between two different things. You can open a workout or just start a workout immediately. And then you can choose between walking, running, and cycling workouts. Uh, I would love the ability to choose any workout uh, possible here. Not sure why that's the case where it just has those workouts for the moment, but from anywhere in the interface at this point, you can go ahead and press the action button and boom, it'll just start the workout immediately. And like I mentioned in my in-depth review, I have accidentally pressed that action button on quite a few occasions. So uh, you may just be like chilling somewhere and like discover that you've already started a workout somehow. So just keep that in mind with that. Uh, and then again with the open workout from any screen, boom, you can just open the workout screen from there. Another thing I wanted to show you too is that there's also a second press feature with this. So, so if we start a workout right here, the second press, mark a segment, segment one. and one. then you can use any combination of two buttons to pause the workout. So before with any other Apple Watch, you could press the digital crown and the side button together. Workout paused. So right now, Workout resumed. Workout paused. Any combination workout of two resumed. buttons, you can pause the workout and resume the workout. So I find that super, super convenient because honestly, this motion right here of squeezing the side button or the digital crown together, um, it's just a lot more natural than pressing the two buttons on the side. So really happy to see that. And then one more thing with the action button, actually there's two more things, but one more thing with the action button is that if you long press it, 
Here's where you can access the screen to enable a siren, uh, enable the compass backtrack feature. And by the way, the siren is super, super loud. I don't want to do it again inside just because it is really loud. And uh, yeah, it, go ahead and check out my in-depth review to hear that. So the precision start feature, it's kind of tied to the action button, but uh, I'm going to show you that it's sort of not too. So I'd love to see the precision start feature on some other Apple watches. If we back out of there, precision start, it's not under the action button settings. It's actually under the workout settings. If we go here, choose workout, here's the precision start feature right here. So if we enable this, what happens is that without even the action button right there, if we go to the workout screen, click on this. So usually you have that three, two, one countdown sort of thing. So instead it goes to this kind of like getting ready for the workout and to start the workout, you can press the action button. So if we just do this, boom, start the workout. However, what I also wanna show you is that with this precision start feature, well, you can also swipe to the right and start from there, which is something that you could do on other Apple Watches. The other thing really cool about precision start is that when you click on an outdoor workout, it gives you a GPS indicator right there. So it just lets you know that you actually have a GPS fix before you go and start your outdoor workout. Um, something that I've just really been wanting. Um, so that's awesome to see there, but I would just love to see it possibly in another place on the interface. So you can maybe have it up here or maybe even on the card itself, but there's a lot of possibilities there. I think that would be a cool feature for um, all Apple users. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and zoom this out because we're gonna do some size and weight comparisons with some other watches here. So, and that's what it looks like on me. I feel that it fits me pretty well. It is certainly larger than a Series 8, which we'll get to in just one second. So one thing I did sort of touch on in my in-depth review is that Digital Crown, it is kind of large. So if you wear it really tight and if your skin kind of comes up a little bit, when you press down the digital crown, you can feel it on your skin down there. So anyways, just kind of something to look out for. But uh, yeah, I am used to wearing larger watches, so the Ultra wasn't that big a deal for me. But just for comparison, here's a Series 8. The difference is pretty big between the two. I apologize, some of these watches I have for you today are charged, some are not. But then here's the second gen SC, which is 44 millimeters versus the 45 millimeters of the Series 8. So it's pretty much the same thing, to be honest with you. It's really not that much different, but different than the Ultra for sure. <laughs> but now let's break out some other watches. So let's see here. I think you may be interested in the Galaxy Watch 5 the Garmin Epics. Let's go ahead and bring out a Foreigner 955, a Coros Vertex 2, as well as a Galaxy Watch 5, just for comparison. Oh, you know what? Let's do a Garmin Venue 2 Plus as well. So here's the Venue 2 Plus. Again, this is a watch that I believe Fits me and my 187 millimeter circumference wrist very well. Ultra is certainly larger. Foreigner 955, I feel this is very similar to the Venue 2 Plus. Again, this one is pretty appropriate for my wrist. Then we have the Galaxy Watch 5. And again, this is a pretty appropriate size for me. This is the larger of the Galaxy Watch 5s. Then let's see here. Let's go with a, while we're on the Samsung train, let's go with a Watch 5 Pro. Here we go. This one, this one definitely sticks up quite a bit more than all the others. So yeah, the Watch 5 Pro and the Ultra are pretty similar. Yeah, next is Garmin Epix. And the Epix is certainly a little bit larger watch, um, but I am totally used to something that size. And this, I would say it feels similar. So the Vertex 2. 
is where we're starting to get in some pretty big watches here. So the Enduro 2 and the Vertex 2, they're some of the biggest watches out there that, um, well, aren't G-Shocks, I guess you could say. So yeah, oh, there you go. And then for some longer term thoughts on battery life. So with other Apple watches, I kind of had this always like battery anxiety sort of thing where I kind of knew I had to charge it pretty much every day. With the Ultra, that really doesn't happen where I can easily go a day or sometimes two days and sometimes even three days without having to charge it. And for me, it really has enhanced the experience of using an Apple watch where I kind of just don't have to worry about it as much. And the nice thing is you do have that USB-C fast charger where you can get a full charge from empty in around an hour and a half. So for my typical usage, I'm basically tossing it on charger for like maybe 45 minutes every other day and I'm pretty good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video because I really need to work on some one-to-one -one comparisons with some of these other watches but if you have any special requests for some comparisons to the Ultra definitely leave that in the comment section down below and on your way down there if you found the information in this video to be useful do me a favor and just quickly hit that like button and also subscribe if you aren't so already for plenty more sports tech videos that are right around the corner. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.